Silicon Valley is the epicenter of the tech world. It has thousands of tech companies, most of which are startups, but also Google, Facebook, Netflix, Apple, and Amazon. But how was the Silicon Valley culture born? And what role did Google, one of the giants, play in its creation? In this video, I'm going to be sharing about Silicon Valley culture. So if you're interested, keep watching and subscribe to this channel for more videos for software engineers. Hi, I'm Yulia Eskin, a Silicon Valley tech lead and a career coach for software engineers. This is the right channel for you if you're a software engineer who wants to get promoted, become a tech lead, or just be a better engineer. Before Google came around, most technology companies had a pretty corporate feel. A lot of hierarchy, meaning a lot of middle management, cubicles, a 9 to 5 schedule, and engineers were viewed more as people who are serving other parts of the business. Google started in 1996 and now has 4 billion users in the world. It has completely changed the world with its technology. Of course, the search engine, Gmail, and YouTube, the platform on which you're watching me here. But Google's contribution don't stop just at the tech level. It has also shaped, to a very large extent, the culture of Silicon Valley. So here are three different elements that really make Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley. So here's the first one. Engineers are key players at the company. What does this mean? In many other companies, the business unit or product managers, as people call it in tech, they run the show. Engineers are basically there to implement the ideas that product managers have, and they really don't have a lot of influence on the direction that the company takes. Google really changed the model and put the engineer at the middle of the company. In Silicon Valley and in Google, engineers have a lot of say on what the company is going to be building. Engineers also often become leaders that have a lot of say on what the company's direction is going to be and how it's going to get there. Often, especially if we're talking about Google, engineers have more power and more influence than product managers. Also, if we're speaking at a company hierarchy, Google's main cultural contribution here was to introduce a very flat hierarchy. For a really long time, Google didn't believe in management at all, and it still really believes in the idea of self-managing teams. What it means is that engineering teams have the power to decide on how they want to work, whether they need a lot of supervision or not, and essentially, people in Silicon Valley who become managers, engineering managers, they have to have been engineers before. Management here means that you are very, very technical because the engineers you manage have to be able to respect you and listen to you. So in the flat hierarchy model, it doesn't mean that there are no managers at all. There are definitely engineering managers and directors and VPs and CTOs, of course. But the main idea in Silicon Valley is that you really should minimize how much management you introduce because you really need a lot Lot more people to build the product than to manage the product. And so the point is to have minimal management, just enough to get the job done. More than that, engineers at Google are given the option of spending 20% of their time on side projects that interest them that are not related to their main work. And why do they do that? The reason for that is to help engineers feel fulfilled and the understanding that people may want to explore different ideas that they cannot always do through their main work. This is such a big paradigm shift that Google introduced into the Silicon Valley culture that companies need to care about the happiness of their engineers because they have so much value to add. And that's something I've seen myself too. In Silicon Valley, engineers have a lot of power on choosing the kind of teams they want to be on, the kind of projects they want to work on. And if there's something that they don't like, it's okay to go to your manager and say, that doesn't align with my interests. I want to work on a team where I'm able to try this technology or to try this idea. The second big cultural element of Silicon Valley is caring about the comfort of employees. This is probably the largest largest change that Google introduced as a company. It was a completely revolutionary thing back in the late 90s. Google's goal was to make their employees maximally comfortable. Imagine corporate America in the late 90s. You're sitting at a cubicle, you have a dress code where you have to come to work wearing a button-down shirt, dress pants, and dress shoes. Google completely erased all of that, removing any need for a dress code. That is why in Silicon Valley you often see people 
dressed really, really simply, just with t-shirts, hoodies, jeans, and sneakers. That is the Silicon Valley fashion. Google also introduced something that at that time was unheard of. Amazing perks for employees, free food, three catered meals every single day, micro kitchens full of snacks and desserts and anything you might want to snack on expensive and luxurious coffee machines, gyms, comfortable couches, exercise rooms where you can do yoga, meditation, or stretching, rooms for mothers for pumping breast milk, and even free massages. Now, free massages you don't find at most Silicon Valley companies, but I know for a fact that Google has them. Another important thing in terms of comfort is that Google allows employees to move around the campus and work from wherever they want. There's no requirement to sit at your desk through the entire workday. Basically think where you're productive and go and work there. They have so many amazing spaces for you to take your laptop and work. All of that, at first, was a complete shock to corporate America. And I remember when people were talking about it that it's just going to make employees lazy, that productivity is going to go down. But actually, the opposite happened. Employees became more productive because they didn't have to worry about the food they're going to bring to work or spending their lunch hour going to get food. They didn't have to worry about what they wear and they definitely didn't need to worry about being monitored by their boss and having to sit at their desk from nine to five all the time. This paradigm shift spread through Silicon Valley like wildfire. And it really is like that. When you work even at a very small startup here, this is what you expect. You expect to have free food. You expect to have snacks. You expect this kind of treatment where the company trusts you and let you work in the way that you are most comfortable in. The big realization here for companies in Silicon Valley was that people actually want to work more and are more productive when they feel at ease and when they know that the company trusts them. And this leads me to my last point. The benefit of such an environment was massive innovation. Google created a company where people felt psychologically safe. What does this mean? When people feel psychologically safe, it means that they're allowed to take risks and they're not going to be penalized or fired for failing or for making mistakes. And let me give you an example. Throughout Silicon Valley, there's something called a blameless postmortem. Sounds kind of scary, right? So what is it? Basically, a, a postmortem is a report that's written after a company experiences a large bug that causes outage where the company's product is no longer available. For example, Facebook had an outage a couple months ago where it was just not accessible for about nine hours. So after something like that happens and the problem gets fixed, the tech teams that are relevant get together and write this document about what happened. Now, what is the meaning of blameless here? And what is the goal of this? Basically, the goal is to analyze what happened without pointing fingers, to look at the failures that happened that resulted in the outage, but without blaming individuals. And I want to read to you something from Google's own website. If a culture of finger pointing and shaming individuals or teams for doing the wrong thing prevails, People will not bring issues to light for fear of punishment. And here's another one. You can't fix people, but you can fix systems and processes to better support people making the right choices when designing and maintaining complex systems. In my opinion, this is revolutionary. In many other companies, if you are responsible for something like Facebook or Google going down, you might get fired, but at these companies in Silicon Valley, it's not viewed this way. There's shared ownership of failures, and failures are merely seen as experiments that didn't work out, that produced a lot of data that we can now analyze, reflect on, and make our system even more resilient. I find that so inspiring, and that is why I love working in Silicon Valley. More than that, this is the key to Silicon Valley's innovation, Plain and simple. Innovation requires encouraging people to take risks and then tolerating and understanding that there will be some failures. But taking risks is more important than failing sometimes. So this is how, in my opinion, Google really shaped Silicon Valley. And I'm forever thankful to Google for that. I find it really inspiring to work at a place like that. Tell me what do you think? What is it like where you work? Are there perks? Is there tolerance and encouragement of taking risks? Tell me in the comments. And please like this video, check out my website below, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one. Bye!